Hi, I'm Nicole Feta, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you some home remedies that I use on my family and on myself when we're sick or we're experiencing unwanted symptoms. Remember, though, that you need to have a good foundational healthy diet um, before any of these are really going to work as well as they actually can. Many um, symptoms are caused by nutritional deficiencies, so if you eat a healthy diet, and get all the nutrition that your body needs, you may be able to get rid of your symptoms just through that alone. Okay, so the first disorder or health problem that I wanna discuss is called adrenal burnout. Um, your adrenals are little glands that sit on top of each kidney, and they deal with um, stress hormones, such as cortisol and adrenaline. Whenever you get the butterflies in your stomach feeling, when you're feeling nervous, that's your adrenal glands pumping out these uh, stress hormones. So after years of stress, um, environmental pollution, uh, unhealthy diet, chemicals, heavy metals, you know, our adrenals can become burned out or very sluggish. And we start experiencing, experiencing symptoms such as fatigue, uh, craving sweets, low blood pressure, low body temperature, poor memory, hypoglycemia, always feeling cold, depression, um, you know, weakness, all those sorts of symptoms. So if you're experiencing that, uh, you may have adrenal burnout. There are some tests you can have done through a naturopath or a chiropractic's office, uh, such as a saliva test that can test your cortisol levels. And if, if they're low or if they're way too high, you may be suffering from adrenal burnout. So I've got some solutions for you and here they are. Okay, so I have a homemade tincture here, and this is um, just an adrenal formula, and it contains rhodiola, Siberian ginseng, licorice root, and ashwagandha. And these four herbs are um, really good for your adrenal glands. For example, ashwagandha is an adaptogenic herb, which means that it helps you adapt to stress. So I'm gonna show you how to make a homemade tincture. Okay, so the first step here is just to get a uh, wide mouth glass mason jar and fill it up about halfway with your selected herb. And if you're making a tincture with, you know, more than one herb like I did, you're going to have to do this in separate jars. So fill it about halfway with your cut herb. And I get my herbs from mountainroseherbs.com, but there's many high quality websites that you can purchase dried herbs from. So you'd fill it about halfway and then fill this almost to the top with vodka. Now I know that sounds a little strange but the alcohol in the vodka helps pull out the medicinal properties of the herb. And then you're going to want to cover it up and let this sit in a dark cool place for about a month and every time you think of it shake it up. And that should help disperse those medicinal properties and really help pull out all of them. Okay, so after about a month, this is what it should look like. It's going to be a really dark amber color. And like I said, you should shake it up pretty much every day. But if you forget a couple days, it's okay. So after this, you'd want to strain this through some type of strainer, uh, maybe cheesecloth, and then take out the you know liquid and discard the herb. And then you can fill it into these tincture bottles just the liquid into the tincture bottles and then you have yourself a tincture. So if you're making the combination that I explained before for the adrenals, you're going to want to have four different jars with all, you know, four different herbs and then after you've strained everything out, then you can mix it together and put it into this tincture bottle. Okay, so as far as dosages go for taking these herbal tinctures, um, I can't give you specifics because everybody's a little bit different and you really need to talk to um, a licensed uh, medical physician for dosages. However, I can tell you what I take. I take approximately two droppers full about three times a day in a glass of water. Another herb I like to take to keep my adrenals healthy are nettles and I usually make them into an infusion. And nettles are great for your immune system and building the blood, and like I said, they also nourish your adrenal glands. Right. So what I do is I take the dried herb and I put it into a wide mouth glass mason jar. I don't worry about measuring this, you know. I put about a half a cup in here, it doesn't matter. 
and then we pour some boiling water in. And what I'm making here is, is an infusion. It looks, you know, like I'm making a tea, but the difference between tea and an, an infusion is that infusions steep much longer than tea does. So we're going to want to put on the top so that those wonderful medicinal properties don't escape. And we let this sit for about four hours and you can see it's already turning yellow. And this tastes really good. Um, it, you know, tastes like a really nice tea and it's uh, really good for your adrenal glands. And what's great about nettle is that it, it, an infusion of nettle can contain up to 1200 milligrams of calcium per cup. So that's great for those of you who don't want to take synthetic calcium supplements, which I don't recommend anyway. So after about four hours, and you can actually steep this overnight as well, but after about four hours it'll be ready and you can sweeten it with a little stevia or honey if you'd like and it's really good. And um, one thing I do want to mention about adrenal health is that please don't eat a lot of sugar or junk food or processed foods. That really taxes your adrenals. So if you want to keep your adrenals healthy and feel great, please cut down on sugar and processed foods. For a bladder infection, we have colloidal silver, B mannose, and these are Dr. Schultz's kidney bladder tea and tincture. Now these contain uh, herbs such as uva ursi, horsetail, juniper berry, corn silk, and other herbs that are really good for the urinary system. Now D-mannose is just, um, it's a type of sugar, but it actually helps uh, get rid of bacteria in the urinary system and help um, nourish it and keep it healthy. And then colloidal silver is actually a natural antibiotic that it actually just tastes like water and you can take it to boost the immune system as well as take it for any infection. Okay, for headaches, I usually take uh, white willow bark, and that's the stuff here on the right, and then I just put them into little capsules and keep them in a container, and this really helps with headaches. And the other thing I try, too, is magnesium, about two to 400 milligrams of magnesium, and this is liquid magnesium, and it gets assimilated better in the body that way. I just mix it with a little water, and that relaxes all of the muscles in case you have a tension headache and it really works well and if you're if you're prone to migraines you can try another herb called feverfew I don't have that here but I don't usually get migraines but that's something that you can use for migraines okay so for menstrual cramps cramp bark tincture is really wonderful it really works great I take about three teaspoons of this tincture in a glass of water three times a day and the other thing you can do is rub some clary sage and then follow that with basil and then follow that with cypress and rub that on your lower abdomen. Uh, make sure you dilute it with a little bit of vegetable oil or olive oil and that can really help with menstrual cramps. And then you can also put a warm heating pad on your lower abdomen after you've applied these oils and this should work for you. Whenever anyone in my family gets a cold or the flu, which isn't very often, but you know, we all get sick sometimes, I always give my kids echinacea tincture. And I make it myself. And I also make elderberry syrup, which you just mix about a quarter cup of the elderberries, these are little dried elderberries, in a pot with um, warm wa or hot water and you boil it. And then you let it simmer for 20 minutes and then you strain it out. And then the liquid I mix with raw honey and then I mix the echinacea tincture together and I give that to them three times a day. Um, and then when you're recovering from your cold or your flu, I, uh, you could take astragalus, which um, is a good adaptogenic herb and helps you recover from your cold and it also boosts your immune system. And the third thing I usually take, I don't give this to my kids because it's very strong, but this is something called Supertonic. And Dr. Schultz sells this too, but I make it myself and it's with equal parts of chopped garlic, horseradish root, white onion, habanero peppers, or you can use jalapeno peppers, or even cayenne peppers, and ginger root. And then you would make it sort of the same way you make it as a tincture, put it in a large glass jar, all of those 
um, vegetables or herbs, whatever you want to call them, and then put some apple cider vinegar in there instead of the vodka. And make sure it's raw, unfiltered, organic apple cider vinegar. And shake that once a day for a month, and then strain it out at the end of the month, and you've got something called super tonic. And it's very strong, and I take about a half of a shot glass full with echinacea while I'm sick. And garlic is a natural antibiotic, and it really helps um, kill bacteria in the back of the throat and in the body. And ginger is good for inflammation, which is also in the super tonic. About every three to six months, I do Dr. Schultz's colon cleanse. And formula number one is uh, sort of helps your body uh, move your bowels. And formula number two actually absorbs toxins from your colon and um, helps rid them from your body. So this is full of activated charcoal and bentonite clay. And this has senna leaf and cascara sagrada bark and Oregon grape root and aloe leaf. And it's, um, it really helps people who have constipation. I don't usually have that, but this stuff does bind um, bind you up a little bit, so this helps uh, get, every, get everything out of your body. And it, I actually took this one time when I ate something that didn't quite agree with me, um, and it cured me in about, a, in about an hour. I was actually um, done being sick because it absorbs toxins from um, the colon and from your gastrointestinal tract. So if you ever get food poisoning or gastroenteritis, aka the stomach flu, um, I would recommend taking this formula number two because it absorbs viruses and toxins from your gastrointestinal tract. When you're feeling nauseous or if you have a stomach ache, um, you can take ginger. I take little candy ginger or um, this is Young Living uh, Essential Oil of Ginger and you can put this into a little capsule along with a little bit of olive oil and just swallow that. This is black pepper which works really great for digestion and this is called Digize, and this is a mixture of different essential oils that are good for digestion that you can also put into a gelatin capsule along with some vegetable oil and swallow that whenever you're dealing with any type of nausea or stomach ache or any problems with your digestive system. If you're dealing with a sluggish liver or if you want to detoxify the liver, uh, I, I take milk thistle dandelion root, and burdock root. Also every three months I do Dr. Schultz's liver gallbladder cleanse. I'm, I don't have any of his herbs right now to show you, but you can go on his website and check that out. Um, but these three herbs are really wonderful for your liver. And it's very important to detoxify the liver uh, as often as you can because there's always going to be toxins in our environment that we just you know can't do anything about we need to keep our livers working healthy and milk thistle actually protects your liver as well as detoxify it okay so I'm going to show you my natural medicine cabinet these are all my tinctures that I make I've got echinacea in there I've got milk thistle ginkgo biloba burdock root astragalus I've got tons of stuff in here and I've got my essential oils and I have about 30 to 50 more upstairs but these are all my tinctures and I've got one going right here I'm making uh, some yellow dock which is really good for those of you who have anemia and here's my whey and Dr. Schultz's detox my superfood my coconut oil my white willow bark up there and on the other side I've got all my supplements so all the stuff I take, these are for my kids. I take vitamin D3 every day to stay healthy. Got some herbs up here. This is red raspberry leaf, which is really great for toning the uterus um, during pregnancy. And it's also a good source of, um, it helps the body increase progesterone if you've got problems with estrogen dominance. Um, this is red clover blossoms, which is more estrogenic in its nature and that can help with menopausal symptoms. And there's some kidney bladder tea, and I've got some salt in there. So that is my medicine cabinet.